Welcome to Get In, the software-defined vehicle podcast from BlackBerry. With this series, we're diving into what the future of transportation just might look like. So don't just stand there, get in. Welcome back to CES 2024. I'm Steve Kovsky with BlackBerry, and I'm very honored to be in the booth of Mitsubishi Electric with one of their esteemed technical folks. And Michael Harati, would you please introduce yourself? Oh, thank you, Steve. Yeah, my name is Michael Harati. I'm the director of advanced engineering at Mitsubishi Electric. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet the BlackBerry team. Welcome yes, to our- yes. In fact, good to see you again. <laughs> likewise, likewise. And uh, it's, it's good to be here and see this technology in person and in action. And tell us a little bit first about the company because Mitsubishi is so large um, and, and uh, this is very somewhat specialized what you do. Give us a little description. Yeah, absolutely. So Mitsubishi Electric is a huge conglomerate, so uh, as you've uh, hinted, and the uh, the company is split into different business units. The Mitsubishi Electric Automotive America falls under the automotive division. Uh, we are based in Detroit mostly, but we have teams spread out across the nation uh, in North America. And uh, my team specializes in, in you know, innovation. So it's the innovation labs of the automotive division at the Mitsubishi Electric. BlackBerry has a very... A proud relationship with you. And this is a demonstration of some of the latest innovation that you're working on together. Tell us what we're standing in front of and, and what this signifies for Mitsubishi Electric. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. This this uh, this is the fruit of the effort of the last couple of years of collaboration between Mitsubishi Electric and um, uh, BlackBerry's uh, team, both on the QNX and the IV product. Uh, so this, this demonstration uh, focuses on safety, so it um, highlights the possibilities when you looking in the cabin, how can you make the ride safer and uh, more entertaining and uh, reduces the stress of the driver. Um, and it was possible because we were able to collaborate together and show what can be done with, between Mitsubishi Electric Technology and uh, BlackBerry Ivy's platform. Well, you know, it's... it's uh keeping people safer on the road, saving lives. Absolutely. This is this is of the highest order. Yes. And so it's it's wonderful to to be part of that and to see it coming into fruition. Uh, tell us some of the features and then we're going to go inside the car in a minute and and actually experience them. Yeah, so so there the features are divided into different areas, but uh, most of our features focuses on driver monitoring um in terms of uh, health monitoring biometrics, uh you know, tracking your heart rates, breathing rates. Um, where you're looking, um, and then we'll, we look at the occupants of the vehicle, so whatever was left behind, seat belts were buckled, um, and, and that sort. And, and for that, we use various different um, algorithms and sensors to allow us to do that you know, determination. And on top of that, we have um, object detections on the road, so we can determine if the road is slippery, is it safe to drive, will that impact your braking distance, and so on. And then in the end, we'll show you something cool um, about contactless entry. So how can you enter a vehicle without having any contact? And this is this is heavily focused on um, reducing the uh, distraction and the stress on the user when they try to access the vehicle. You know, it's exciting because you're you're treating the operators of the car, so regular people like me and uh, me and you, like astronauts or elite athletes. You know, those are those are the uh, the kinds of individuals who normally get that type of monitoring and uh, and that type of assistance. It's almost like giving us superpowers, which is which is very exciting. That's how I view it. Yeah. Um, and um, what makes this possible? Let's talk a little bit about um, about BlackBerry IV and how it it collects and normalizes the data from the sensors throughout the car, and and how did this assist your team? Absolutely. So, so you know, a perfect example, and and we've you know we'll we'll show it later in the demonstration is is to enable one specific instance, so one algorithm to to generate uh, insights of what's happening in the in the in the cockpit. So, let's say gaze gaze detection, so tracking where you look at. Um, that normally would take us on the order between nine to twelve months to complete, and then uh, you know as a result of with with the great team that you have. Uh, and our uh, collaboration, we were able to complete nine instances in less than two months. Wait a minute. Let me do the math on that. So, <laughs> so uh, that's that's the fact that you'll see it. It's 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 that you know that's that precise. It it's basically, you know, what was promised and the vision of Ivy 
it translated very well with what we've done here. Uh, so, you know, the road is bright, you know, ahead of us. And I think this is, uh, shows a lot of promise. You know, one other thing I'd like to talk to you about is um, Ivy. It was developed uh, in concert with AWS and the cloud. How much of this is taking place here at the edge in the, in the vehicle? Are you also utilizing cloud in some ways? Um, not in this demo yet, but, uh, and that's, again, it's, it shows you the strength of what you can do in a um, uh, edge device. Mm -hmm. So all of these instances, all of these inferences can be done on the edge. Like that's how, how much uh, this technology is, is enabling us to do what we do. So we're looking forward to, you know, expanding it to a cloud component and uh, presenting to the industry a, a top-down or bottom-up uh, approach of how this uh, connected vehicle approach of the future with a software-enabled vehicle uh, will, will look like. That is quite amazing yeah. that all, yeah. all of that and, and the, uh, the, art, the AI, the, the algorithms can be accomplished in the vehicle without a connection. Without a connection. Um, you gave us a little hint about the future. What else can you tell us about the, the future? What will, we, what will we be talking about at CES 2025? Well, I see more uh, mature applications of um, AI. So like we've seen, AI has been a huge theme in the automotive industry this year. It's going to get even more um, uh, wider deployment and adaption. Um, we have an example of generative AI, you know, several examples of generative AI coming to the vehicle. It will get a wider, you know, impact, um, you know, ne not necessarily just in infotainment. So you can see that also expanding. So, yeah. And, uh, and all of that is, is, um, enabling. So the, the, at the core of it, it's safety, but it's to enable us to move from level two to level three to level four autonomous vehicles. So the more the vehicle understands the occupants and what they're doing, the safer it is to turn on autonomous mode and take away the, the right from the driver, you know, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's an exciting future. Absolutely. I'm pretty excited about getting in the vehicle. Here we're going to go over our uh, demonstration at CES. Uh, with me in the car is Kyle Trout, a senior hardware engineer at the Advanced Engineering Team at Mitsubishi Electric. All right, let's 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 kick it off, Kyle. What, what do we have first? Yeah, so we're going to start off uh, going over some of our sensing technologies, specifically looking at our occupant monitoring. So we have going on here is a combination of radar information and overhead camera information, uh, pulling in data to basically assess uh, where occupants are seated in the vehicle and give a overview of their body size. Uh, so as you can see now, we have a couple of adults here in the vehicle, shifting over to some data coming from our point cloud that's used to make that assessment. Utilizing our radar, we also have some millimeter wave data uh, to look at some smaller movements to get biometric data such as breathing rate. If you want to go ahead and jump into thermal from here, Michael. Absolutely. So the thermal uh, view, it's just a view to showcase our um, the thermal sensing technology. So it's uh, this is one of the features that are completely um, top to bottom designed and built by Mitsubishi Electric team. Uh, it uses uh, Mitsubishi Electric thermal imaging sensors. Uh, this distributed across the cabin in four different locations so we can detect in the four zones of the uh, cockpit. Uh, this view is the driver's view. That is the front passenger view. We also have the second row as well. Uh, so that's the, see you guys, the back. Uh, yeah, so th this is the occupant sensing thermal part of the occupant sensing application. Um, and the last, last bit is the uh, RGB view, so wave to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this one also um, leverages the standard RGB cameras that are also in the vehicle. So there's two in, the, in this uh, particular vehicle, and it tracks your face, uh, it tracks your seat belt, you know, buckled or not buckled, and it works for the front row and the back row. So, <laughs> and none of us are buckled because we're the vehicle is in motion anyway. Uh, so that's the occupant sensing component. Uh, so what we have going on here is a lot more driver focused information. Um, so initially a uh, highlight is you can notice our system has determined that Michael himself is driving this car. Um, so we can use that uh, recognition information to do all sorts of things from just loading regular personal information 
um, and setting up your HMI to your preferences uh, or possibly to give some control for vehicle owners over um, who else might be driving their car and what they are and are not allowed to do while they're driving. Um, another piece of information we can highlight right here is some emotion detection. Uh, Michael's pretty positive right now, uh, having a good time at CES. We also have capability to determine a neutral face or a more <laughs> negative face, um, basically to pull that information in to determine some levels of distraction. An angry driver is probably not a safe driver. It is correct. Um, we also have uh, some other DMS capabilities over here, looking at some GSR compliance. We have capability to determine smoking detection uh, based on some hands near the mouth and phone detection uh, to determine if you're using a cell phone while you're driving. Uh, finally, we have uh, some drowsiness detection. So if we can get a nice big yawn from you, Michael. There we go. Michael's a tired driver. A tired driver is an unsafe driver. Um, and then one of our really important highlights for this year's show is some biometrics information. So as you can see, we're getting some heart rate detection. This is completely contactless. Uh, it's based on some IR information coming from Michael's face based on blood flow in and out. Yep. Um, we also have some breathing rate information coming from the radar, as we indicated a bit ago, looking for shifts in the motion of the chest to determine how often you're breathing. And then some temperature information coming from our thermal sensors. Overall, this is giving an assessment of the medical state of the driver uh, to determine if there's some kind of emergency that might not be detected from posture collapse. Um, jump into gaze. S jump into gaze. So gaze is another application where we're looking at um, tracking where, where the driver is looking. So we are very precise. We actually segmented the uh, the windscreen and the side, uh, the side views. Uh, to exactly track where you're looking. And this will help us determine if the driver is looking at the road and for how long, um, and if that's gonna be a concern or not. So let's move to the next one. So thermal, again, we're building off of our thermal imaging um, system. Uh, here, this application is focusing specifically on the driver. Um, we we use machine learning to train uh, the machine um, to detect hands on wheel. So if your hands are on the wheel or not. So it detects. Um, so thermal imaging here is used to detect hands on wheel. So as you can see, my hands are on the wheel, and the system knows that I'm driving. My hands are on the wheel. So this is another safety factor. It also can detect if you're if you're looking away, for example distracted so that's another one and then of course your your driver overall thermal uh, profile because that could be data used later for you know optimizing your hvac because you know if, if there's only nobody in the car except the driver then we probably can better service the driver with a better um, ac or hvac uh, control so this is the concludes the driver monitoring component which is specifically focused on the driver only and its uh, safety uh, only pure safety. So moving on to the exciting, one of the most exciting features. So why don't you take that, Kyle? Yeah. So we're going to jump into our distraction meter. Um, this distraction meter is taking all of those different components that we just talked about in DMS and OMS, as well as some additional information to determine overall level of safety of the driver, their attentiveness, their ability to drive and get to their destination without problem. Um, as you can see, we have gaze distraction, um, thermal hands off the wheel and major distraction and emotional uh, stress that we went over just a bit ago. Um, obviously, we're giving a demonstration. We're not really looking out the road, and Michael's not paying attention to where he's driving. Um, we also have quite a bit of passenger interaction. This is pulling in data from our microphones. Um, if you're having a normal conversation with somebody else, you're probably driving safely, but if you have a car full of kids that are being really, really loud, uh, it's probably a very stressful situation. Uh, so we can make an assessment based on the amount of activity going on in the car. Um, we also have some distraction based on HMI interaction. If you're looking at your screen and touching all over, you're probably not paying attention to your drive very much. Um, and probably one of the most important things that we have going on here is this entire feature is built on top of BlackBerry's IV. Um, Michael, if you want to talk about IV a little bit and give some highlights about Absolutely. what that does. Absolutely. Thank you, Kyle, for the transition. So the... the um... Uh, all these features, all these these uh, algorithms that are running, and we've we've kind of hinted to in different um, 
packaging or different areas. So whether it's driver monitoring focused or it's occupant monitoring focused or generally biometric sensing, all of that is pooled to this one mega, you know, uh, application. Uh, we have all these nine different synthetic sensors and they're all combined together to make a determination if the driver is distracted or not. It's very um, complicated to determine levels of distraction using one or two factors, like your eyes dilated or not, your heartbeat. It's it's not easy. So the more data we have, the better it is to, to, to make that determination. And BlackBerry has been instrumental into making this uh, feature um, work come together. Uh, what we extract out of this is several things we can do. So if a distraction has been detected, so we have a, a timeline of an event. So if a distraction happens, uh, for example, here, um, it will take a photo or logs what happened, what caused that distraction for later view, you know, to better address it in the future. Um, another example of uh, uh, what we can do with this data is what we call tackle. So tackling this uh, distraction, whether it's stress-related or not. So debate based on the type of distraction that the driver is facing. It could be fatigue. It could be, you know, exhaustion. So we can suggest different ways to handle it. So, you know, whether it suggest a coffee shop or uh, listen to a specific music that can calm the driver down or even change the light mood and like the whole theme in the vehicle to calm down or, you know, wake up and, you know, invigorate the driver. And if the d distraction is too high and, you know, whether it's like noise, like the, the situation that Kyle mentioned, we can uh, address it by turning on focus mode. So in focus mode, basically the, the, the screen becomes a little bit more limited, restricted, uh, you know, touch be becomes very limited. You can't open apps, uh, helping the driver to reduce, you know, what we would classify um, as distraction. Could be like your phone digging too much or text messaging coming too much. Um, and that would make it a safer ride. And once the distraction and the stress level is calmed down and the driver is capable of, you know, accessing its, the screen safely, we can exit focus mode and go back to normal operation. We have one more feature that we're going to show you outside the car related to some of the DMS features we've shown you before. Um, so as we indicated previously, we have capability to determine face ID um, based on just the driver sitting in the cockpit. And we're also able to determine um, direction of the head and the eyes. So we've taken that outside of the vehicle and essentially we've created a completely contactless entry, both establishing that you are allowed to have access to the car and giving you a very specific pattern that allows you to open the trunk without accidentally triggering it. Now that we've come to the back of the car, we're gonna show you our contactless entry feature. So here we leverage AI uh, to determine who's the user approaching the car. So we use Face ID, which we've already presented inside the vehicle. And then uh, we use facial landmark to track where the user is, uh, head is moving to activate a specific gesture, kind of like a secret code or a secret handshake to allow contactless entry to the car. And for that, we have Kyle here with, uh, you know, simulated scenario where you have your hands full with some, you know, from back from his trip with some groceries and uh, luggage. So take it away, Kyle. Yep. And just like that, the vehicle opens very easy. Everything you've done here is just fantastic. And uh, thank you so much, Michael and Kyle, for spending some time with thank us. You, thank you. Thank you for the team of BlackBerry. Thank you for stopping by. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to two more greater things together. So yeah. It's going to be a great year. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. That's the end of our episode for today. If you'd like more information on the topics or our guests, please check out blackberry.com slash podcast. Get In, the software-defined vehicle podcast, is available wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with our latest episodes. Thanks for joining us.